the football palace that is Cowboy Stadium in Arlington, Texas. Tonight, Andy Dalton comes in with his TCU team, hoping for another special season like they had a year ago. He's the winningest quarter back in college football today, but in the way in game one, the Rogers brothers, the most dynamic duo in college football today. From Corvallis come the Beavers of Oregon State. Their matchup with the Horn Frogs of TCU is next. State without a preseason ranking a long time, Todd. Last year they were just one win away from making it to the Rose Bowl. They have some known commodities, but they also have an unknown commodity. Well, you mentioned the Rogers brothers. That's the known commodity. Wide receiver James the senior, his younger brother Jaquez, the junior running back, are dynamic playmakers. They accounted for over 60% of the Beaver offense last year, but that was with a senior quarterback. The unknown is sophomore Ryan Katz. Now, I saw him on the practice field this week. He has an NFL caliber arm and very nimble feet. But the bottom line, he's only thrown 27 passes as a college quarterback. And his first start tonight against a team in TCU that's led the nation in total defense the last two years. And against a team that scored almost 39 points a game last year, yep. led by a senior quarterback who's got 29 career wins on the other side. Andy Dalton had a brilliant year last year till the end. He threw three of his eight interceptions in the loss to Boise State. He, more than anybody, has been counting off the days to get back out on the field and to redeem himself and to lead this team. He is the undisputed leader of the Horned Frogs of TCU. After a perfect regular season last year, they stumbled in their bowl game. They're hoping for special times all season long again this year. And here come the Horned Frogs. They're the home team with a big crowd behind them. So tonight, Andy Dalton, the aforementioned quarterback for TCU, will be looking for his 30th career win as their signal caller. That will set a school record. But in the way, those two guys, they are fun to watch. Oregon State and TCU will kick it off when we come back. This is Dick's Sporting Goods Kickoff Week. The 2010 Cowboys Classic. Brought to you by Tostitos. Good times. Guaranteed. Wrangler. For a beatable comfort and value, you can count on Wrangler. Wrangler. Real. Comfortable. Jeans. And Bud Light. It's a sure sign of a good time. Here we go. Oregon State won the toss, so we're going to get a chance to see their offense first. With more on the Brothers Rogers, let's check in third member of our team, Holly Rowe. Holly? Well, James and Jaquiz Rogers are playing tonight about four hours away from where they grew up, and it's the first time they've been back home to play in front of their friends and family in Texas since they left home. They have about 30 to 40 family members here, including their mom, their sister, their brother, uncles. They had special T-shirts made that say, We Believe in Quan and Quiz. That's James's nickname. There could be distractions with this, but their coach, Mike Riley, told me that they were not too hedged, they were ready, they were focused, and that the guys themselves said this will be a business trip. We'll see tonight. Mike Riley, he's always had trouble getting his team focused and ready to play early in the season, but he's got a splendid record 
at Corvallis. This guy, what a record, and what he's done with this football program. Gary Patterson in his 10th season as the head coach of the Horned Frogs of TCU. As I mentioned, Oregon State won the toss. He'll take the ball. That means Kevin Sharples will tee it up. And back deep, James Rogers, one of the captains. They'd like to keep it out of his hands. Jordan Poyer is back there with him. So it's TCU and Oregon State. The boys of fall as we're set from Cowboys Stadium in Arlington. Here we go. James Rogers, a yard deep. Across the 20, fights his way out to about the 24-yard line. Here's the guy that Todd was talking about, Ryan Katz, out of Santa Monica, California. Yeah, he is really talented. I mean, watching him on Wednesday, I mean, when you say a guy has an NFL arm, that means he can make every throw. And Mike Riley is an NFL uh, coach, former head coach in the NFL. He knows what an NFL quarterback looks like. And this guy has got the physical tools. He just has not played much, but he is ready to go. And Mike Riley says, I'm going to tell him to let it rip. Just go play. First down, first play. We're going to let him rip it right here. And he's going deep. And it's James Rogers, and he just overshot it. Well, that's the way he opened things <laughs> that's, up. That's called letting it rip. Yep. Greg McCoy was covering. Rodgers had a step. But the pass was just a little bit too deep. And they went after McCoy, who may be the fastest guy on this TCU team. A very fast team all over the place. But McCoy might be the very fastest. But Rodgers beat him on that play. They shift now, and Jaquiz Rodgers gets back there at the tailback spot. Play action. Cats trouble from behind. Down he goes. Ball is out. TCU's got it, I think. Battle at the bottom of the pile. Wayne Daniels came flying around the corner, and they're going to say that Oregon State got back on top of the ball. Well, he beat the tight end. Brady Camp, number 83, is trying to set inside to block him, and Daniels went right around him with that quickness. This is Daniel's year. He's the guy that's taking the spot of the departed Jerry Hughes, who is a first-round draft pick. And right away, Daniels makes his presence felt. Last year, five and a half sacks. It's the first one for him here in the opening moments. And now Katz will work from the shotgun on a third down and 13. Fires near side and in and out of the hands of the intended receiver, Aaron Nichols. Would have been about a yard short of the first down had he held on to it. So it's three and out for Oregon State. Well, they got two bodies on Daniels that time to give Katz a little more time. And that time, Katz was a little off with his throw. It was an outside route, and the ball was thrown to the inside of his receiver, Nichols, and it resulted in the incompletion. Johnny Hecker will punt for the Beavers and back deep, a guy that's very dangerous. He took two to the house as a punt returner last year, special teams player of the year in the Mountain West. Jeremy Curley. High, deep spiral. Curley's got a back pedal to the 25. Made the first man miss. And then gets down the sideline to about the 33-yard line. And that's where the offense of TCU will take over. Let's take a look at the starting lineup for the Horn Frogs. Here's the big eaters up front. Cannon moves to left tackle, making his first start there. He was on the right side last year. Roth, the right tackle, his first start. And Kirkpatrick is the anchor at center. Ed Wesley starts in the backfield. Hicks and Curley, the wide receivers with Jimmy Young. And the tight end, Evan Frosch. And it's Andy Dalton set up in the backfield with Ed Wesley in a shotgun. And all the receivers have a look to the sideline. We'll see some no huddle out of TCU in this ballgame tonight. Here's a quick pass, and it's in and out of the hands of the intended receiver. So incomplete on first down. We'll see, as Todd was talking about, TCU go with some no huddle tonight, but not after a play like that. Well, it's one of the differences between a fifth-year senior quarterback who has won 29 games and a new quarterback is you put more on his shoulders. You give him more responsibility at the line of scrimmage to check the plays, 
you give him more uh, of that leadership role, and Dalton is ready to, to do that this season. Second down at the 34. Dalton all alone, slip screen, Curley puts his hand down to keep his balance and got up across the 40, close to the 42-yard line. As we take a look at the defensive alignment for Oregon State, and they have got a great one up front in Stephen Paya, one of the best in college football with Olander, Henry, and Miller. Linebackers Keith Pankey coming back from an injury with Wilson and Roberson. And the secondary looks like that's Lance Mitchell, the leader on the back end for Oregon State. First third down of the night for TCU. 41% a year ago, the third down conversions. And it's Dalton who keeps it, and he's got the first down. And that's the dimension that he adds. People forget about sometimes that he threw for 2,700 plus yards last year, but he also ran for over 500. Well, just a little simple zone read play for him, and all the attention went to the back, and Dalton did the smart thing. Go north and south, get the first down, and get yourself a new set of downs. And he does at the 47-yard line. Wesley goes out. Fort comes in as the running back. But right now, everybody split in the shotgun as Dalton's back to throw again. Fires, and it's right into the hands of Lance Mitchell. Mitchell back to the 32-yard line. 21-yard return. And Andy Dalton threw that right to number 10. Yeah, that was a miscommunication between Andy Dalton and two receivers. And he threw it right between two Horn Frog receivers. Watch, he's going to throw it right in between. And the only guy in between is Lance Mitchell for Oregon State. And a big break for the Beaver defense right away. Let's see if they think about a quick strike here. Just outside the 31-yard line. Here's Rodgers, backpedals his way inside the 30, near the 29. Corey Grant, the first guy to make contact. So Andy Dalton, who had those three interceptions in the Fiesta Bowl, didn't want to start out the first three minutes of this game throwing a pick. But it's given Oregon State a golden opportunity here. Now that was uh, definitely con some confusion on the part of the TCU offense on that play. Second down and eight. Cats in the shotgun. Set the throw. Gonna go to the end zone. Touchdown. James Rogers. There's the NFL arm, and there's the speed of James Rogers. And there was the protection that you've got to give a quarterback to make that kind of a throw down the field. Great job by the offensive line, giving Katz time, and the stutter step move by James Rogers to get open in the end zone. Well, you talk about taking advantage of the turnover. Took him two plays. Justin Kehu in for the point after. And it's up and good. Well, just as TCU had picked up a first down and moved it near midfield, first of all, disaster hit with the turnover. Lance Mitchell with the interception. And just two plays later, James Rogers on a strike from Ryan Katz. Beavers, 7 nothing leaders. James Rogers, 15th career touchdown catch. Oregon State, 7-0. Well, I'll tell you, he's having the better of it against Greg McCoy so far early. He ran by him on an incompletion. Watch him now, number eight. Watch this stutter step move right here, and it freezes McCoy. And then he just blurs right by him, and a beautiful throw by Katz. He's, he ran by him early. That time, he double moved him and got an easy touchdown. to kick Curley and McCoy are deep and this will be Curley at the goal line Jeremy Curley whoo, hurdled out to the 16 yard line 7 nothing here let's check in with Reese Davis in the studio Reese
Certainly nice to have that kind of insurance behind the Heisman Trophy winner. Huh? Let's see how Andy Dalton comes back from the interception there. Starting at the 16 yard line. Matthew Tucker in the backfield now. And he'll get the call on the counter. Tucker got his head down and got out to the 20. Well, it's interesting. When we talked to Andy Dalton, we said, okay, you know, you had a, a tough game. You were the first to admit it in that Fiesta Bowl. What did you learn? What was your takeaway from that game? He said, I learned that I've got to stay even keel. Right. I can't get too high, too down. I've got to, because everybody's looking at me, and I've got to stay even keel. So right now he has that opportunity to show that to his team. After the interception that led to the touchdown, he's still the leader of this football team. Second down at seven. As you look at Dalton again in an empty backfield. They throw the screen out in the flats. And that one's going nowhere. Nice defense. Ed Wesley dropped by Brandon Harden. Let's check in with Holly. Well, Todd, to follow up on your point, after that interception, Andy Dalton of TCU came over to the sideline. Nothing in his face would suggest that he was panicking or having inner turmoil. He was calm. His facial expression never changed. He didn't yell at anyone. He didn't get frustrated with anyone. It was cool as ice. He learned from that experience last year. He cannot show that panic to his teammates, who he said everybody was freaking out when things didn't go well early in the Fiesta Bowl. He's not doing that tonight. So they just weren't in sync and on the right page in that entire game. So far in this first quarter, they aren't necessarily either. He's flushed out of the pocket. He'll keep it and diving for the first down. So he keeps his cool, gets what he can, and gets down, and it's first down, Horn Frogs. Well, my dad, who was a longtime football coach, always used to tell me, you've got to stay cool in the head but hot in the heart. And that's what Andy Dalton's doing right now. And right there you see coaches have talked to him about sliding. He says, I'm not comfortable with sliding. I'd rather dive and, and make sure I can avoid the hit that way. And because he dove, he was able to get the first down on that run. So as head coach, nothing cool about Gary Patterson. He's dropping sweat bullets over there already. The roof is open tonight, by the way, at Cowboy Stadium. It was closed until earlier and took about 12 minutes for him to open things up. Reminder, Monday night, you can catch another big game as Kellen Moore and Boise State take on the Hokies of Virginia Tech. The All-State kickoff in the Capitol part of Dick's Sporting Goods kickoff week on ESPN, 8 o'clock Eastern time on Monday night. Of course, that game and this game, everybody feel will shape the entire season for the non-automatic qualifiers. Boise State and TCU both in the top six after their great season a year ago that ended with Boise State's win in the Fiesta Bowl over this very team that we're watching tonight. Pickup of about three. Stephen Paya drops Matthew Tucker, but they're going to move the sticks. That's well, pretty interesting. We talked about Andy Dalton being the winningest active quarterback, but look at number two and three, the two guys that will square off in that game Monday night. Kellen Moore of Boise State and Virginia Tech's Ty and, uh, Ultimately, as a quarterback, that's how you're judged. Right. Wins and losses. Not stats, not numbers. The only number that counts is wins. Colt McCoy's got the record as now a member of the Cleveland Browns. First down, play action. Dalton, watch it all. Deep ball, got a man, and got him in stride. On the run and all the way to the 10 is Sky Dawson. And he's a world-class track guy, and he showed his speed there. Well, Dawson showed his speed, and Dalton showed his poise, because Taylor Henry, number 91, is bearing down on him from his backside. And if he holds it a half second longer, that's a sack. He waits, he throws a perfect throw to Dawson, and Dawson's speed gets the separation for the big play. 52 yards all the way down to the 10-yard line. And on a quick snap and first down, it's Matthew Tucker for about three. He spotted down at the seven, where it's going to be second down and goal. TCU in the red zone last year, 85%. 51 of 60, their scoring opportunities. Right now they're set up at the seven yard line. Wesley back in there as the tailback. Mark Johnson was a motion man, it's the option that way. And Wesley maybe got to the five, close to it anyway. That'll bring up third down and goal. Nice job by Wesley avoiding a, a negative play. Dwight Roberson, number 59 for Oregon State, was in the backfield defending that option well. And 
Wesley was able to just kind of step away from him and at least well, advance the football. Boy, Ed Wesley just told one of the wide receivers to get off the field. Josh Boyce just about threw him to the sideline. Empty backfield for Dalton. Ninth play of the Horn Frog drive on a third and goal. And watch the quarterback run here as well. He's going to run. I don't know if it was by design, but he heads to the pylon. Touchdown. Andy Dalton scores. And we're an extra point away from a tie game. Evans in for the point after. Seven seven. Dalton with a long pass play to Sky Dawson, and then he does it himself. He came back pretty well, didn't he, from that interception, leading an 84-yard touchdown drive and scoring himself. The 2010 Cowboys Classic is presented by Hampton Hotels. At Hampton, we love having you here. And in part by Dick's Sporting Goods. Every season starts at Dick's. Tie game at seven, midway point of the first quarter of the Cowboy Classic. Classic on a Dick's Sporting Goods kickoff week. TCU, an impressive drive led by their senior quarterback. Sharples to kick, Hoyer and Rodgers. Again, wait on the other end. It'll be James Rogers again, this time from about the six. Weaving his way through traffic, and he's out to the 30. Nice return. 24 yards again. Let's go back to the touchdown. Dalton does it himself, Todd. Well, he does. Now, first of all, as you mentioned, Ed Wesley had to take Josh <laughs> Boyce, who's a redshirt freshman, say, get out of here. You're not in this formation. And then Dalton, it was not a designed quarterback run, but he had five receivers, and when everybody started covering receivers and crossing the field, he saw a seam and did the smart thing. For the second time on this drive, on a third down play, he came up with a clutch run, this time six yards for the touchdown. That tied it, and now Oregon State goes back to work from its own 30. Cats pump fake and gives it to Quiz Rogers. The quiz got about three as we check in with Reese in the studio. That one's got to be the top ten plays of the day, I would think. Along maybe with uh, the interception by Sanders Cummings today at Georgia. A one-handed grab. James Rogers, really no gain on the play. Well, TCU, one thing they're prepared for is the fly sweep. I mean, that's uh, that's one of the staples of this Oregon State offense with James Rogers. And uh, the speed of this TCU defense is going to string that play out most of the time. Yeah, here's a big third down for Oregon State trying to answer the long drive by the Horn Frogs. And here's Daniels again right here. The guy they get to account for in this pass protection. Katz fires deep on the sideline. Aaron Nichols, what a catch. What a throw. And a first down at TCU territory. They got 20 on third and eight. Aaron Nichols is one of those dependable receivers. He's played all three of their receiver spots during his career, but he's starting at the X or the split end spot now as a senior. Does a nice job running the out route. Catch and got the one foot down. You only need one in. TCU is going to take a timeout, I think. 
Gary Patterson may be hoping that the guys upstairs led by Jim Blackwood our replay official our officials from the Big 12 by the way that they'll take a look at this. I think the only question is was he bobbling the ball at all as it looked like his left foot was down. We'll take another look as we go to break and we'll have an answer for you when we come back. Gary Patterson called a timeout to make sure that the officials took another close look at that. They look at every play, obviously, but this was never under official review because it was a catch and a great one by Aaron Nichols as he stretched out, got his left foot and knee down before he flew out of bounds. So it's a first down, Oregon State at the TCU 48 yard line. We've seen a good blend of run and pass so far for Oregon State. We haven't seen any misdirection yet and I would expect to see that soon against this fast flow TCU defense. I wonder if they get a screen maybe to quiz Rodgers at some point. They hand it off to him here. And that TCU defense is tough to run against. They were third in the country last year. They gave up only 80 yards a game on the ground and of course you quiz Rodgers was one of the most prolific runners in college football last year. Well, they're both just so dynamic. And the thing about them, they're both 5'7", about 190 pounds, but they play much bigger than their size would suggest. They're physical. Even that run in between the tackles for a 5'7", 190-pound tailback, he's not afraid to stick his nose in there. Cats over the middle and got it to James Rogers and it's a first down down to the 36 yard line. See, This is where I think the Oregon State passing game creates problems for a defense even a good defense like TCU that time Jaquiz goes out in the flat so you got to pay attention to him and that allowed James to just sit right down in a hole in between defenders both those guys on the same side of the field you got to account for both of them and James Rogers was left open. James who has a touchdown catch tonight trots out to the top. He picked up nine there. Now they go to the Wild Beavers set, except there's going to be flags come in before they can get the snap. We saw Katz trying to get over to become a wide receiver, and they were going to direct snap it to Jaquiz Rogers. But the umpire did away with that. Well, the question is, was there a lineman who moved for Oregon State? Katz is allowed to move and change formations. There was definitely movement by the TCU defensive front, but were they drawn off by movement from an offensive lineman. Carl Richens is our referee. Dead ball. Offside. For 57. Defense. Five yard penalty. Still first down. Well, it goes against the defense, but yeah. it kind of spoils what Oregon State wanted to do. Well, they'll take five yards, though, yeah. against this defense in scoring territory. I mean, Corey Grant is going to react to the movement of the quarterback. See, he goes, and there's Grant jumping off sides because of the movement of the quarterback. Now they will go back to the same set. Quiz Rogers to take a direct snap on first and five. And he blasts off the left side inside the 30. About a yard or two. Tank Carter made the tackle. Yeah, and Tanner Brock came flying in there as well. The, the new middle linebacker who's taking the place of Daryl Washington. Uh, the, the, the key losses for this defense, Jerry Hughes, who was a first-round pick by the Colts, a defensive end. He's on the sidelines tonight. And there he is right there in the black shirt. And Daryl Washington, the middle linebacker, who's now the starting linebacker for the Arizona Cardinals. Second down here for Katz. Draw play to Rodgers. Magic Liz is all covered up. No game. Tyler Luttrell, one of the first guys there. And it'll bring up another third down situation. Even though Jaquiz has been pretty bottled up so far, you've got to keep mixing and matching with the pass and the run because he's capable of busting one out if a defense loses assignment. Plus, you have to keep that defense honest. He's only got eight yards on five rushes, but they've got good balance in their offense so far. Now his brother joins him in an eye backfield. Quiz in the stance. James, the tailback. Cats in trouble. Got away from it and throws it incomplete intended for James Rogers. Would have been right at the first down stick. And so it's fourth down. Tank Carter got the pressure that flushed Cats out of the pocket. So the field goal unit will come out. 
And with a name like that, he, he had to be a linebacker. You know, I mean, he, Absolutely. Couldn't, he couldn't be a kicker or anything else named Tank. Well, he had to be a linebacker. His real name's Ricky, but ever since he was a little kid, he's been Tank. It's perfect. It fits. It does. Justin Kahoot will try the field goal. He was 22 out of 27 last year. His career long is 50. This one's from 47. Kick on the way. Pushed it to the left. And the Beavers miss the scoring opportunity, and that's a happy coach on the sideline. So it stays 7-7. TCU will take over after we check in with Reese Davis. Reese. Dual threats in college football. Jake Locker. He was a guy that's not bad either. Andy Dalton at the controls, and he'll keep it. And he's got a first down. Right on cue. Pick up a 12. When your quarterback is a viable running threat, it just creates more dilemmas for a defense. They already spread you out, spread you out by their formations. And then the speed of their wide receiver group, you've got to respect. And then when the quarterback can run as well, makes it doubly difficult. Dalton in the gun. Martin Johnson in motion on a first down. Play action. Firing out. Whew. Johnson made the catch, and he maybe wishes he hadn't. He got leveled out there in the flat. To Imane. Let him have it after this reception. Yeah, he's right on it. It's a good throw by Dalton, but good defense, better defense by Oregon State. Tuamani was a guy who uh, lost his confidence last year. I mean, they groomed him to be a starter as a junior. He had some trouble in pass, in pass coverage. He became a special team star, but he's back out there now as a starting safety. Second down and eight for TCU. Fly sweep coming with that speed again of Dawson. He got dropped as he was approaching midfield. Got to the 48-yard line. James Dockery made the tackle. We'll bring up third down. Dockery, one of the captains of the defense. Making his 14th career start. See, this is perfect situation third down for TCU because it's third down and less than five. So that means everything is open to them. They can throw, they can hand it off, or your quarterback Dalton can run. You've got lots of options with this yardage on third down. Tucker is in the backfield with Dalton. Option, Tucker gets the pitch. Tucker gets the first down. Again, showing their versatility. Dalton several times on that scoring drive kept it himself to convert third downs this time the pitch out to his tailback when you have to defend both pass and run on third down as a defense you're at a disadvantage I mean, the offense has the upper hand in that situation and they made it count that time so now it's at the 46 yard line back in beaver territory dalton under center rolls out Plenty of time. Deep middle. Just overshot Jimmy Young, who might have had a catch and maybe even a touchdown. Well, ESPN 2's coverage of Major League Baseball and the hunt for October continues tomorrow night. Giants take on the Dodgers. Sunday Night Baseball presented by Taco Bell as part of the hunt for October presented by Lee Jeans on ESPN 2 and ESPN3.com. 8 o'clock Eastern time tomorrow night. Brad Nessler, Ty Blackledge, Holly Rowe. In the Cowboy Classic here in Arlington. Late in the first quarter, tie game between six ranked TCU and number 24, Oregon State. Tried a little quick opener to Matthew Tucker, and he got only about a yard. This is the house that Jerry built. Jerry Jones on the right, Larry Scott on the left. Commission of the Pac 10. And what a spectacular football facility is nothing better if you've never been here if you get the chance trust Todd and I we've been here twice now yeah. I could do a game here every week wouldn't bother me yeah. six flags is right next door yeah. I don't think it has anything <laughs> on this place though Jeez. third down and long third and nine as Dalton has time running out of it and he'll go down 
Stephen, Stephen Pyle. Pyle. Yep. The big guy from his tackle position. Preseason All-American. And that ends the quarter with a sack of the TCU quarterback. It's been a good one so far. Dalton with a scoring run. Cats with a scoring throw. Oregon State and TCU tied at seven here in Arlington. You're watching ESPN, new home of the Bowl Championship Series. At TCU, part of the BCS last year. Got out to the Fiesta Bowl and lost. They'd love to get back there again because that would mean they'd be playing for the whole enchilada. Or in that case, all the Tostitos. <laughs> the national championship game there this year. Start of the second quarter as Anson Kelton will punt. And James Rogers back at his own 10-yard line. Trying to keep it out of his hands. I don't think he's going to, but he's hit immediately. Nice coverage. Wobbly kick didn't travel that far, but it did keep James Rogers from doing any further damage. He did do some damage, though, in the first quarter. The long touchdown pass from Ryan Katz, and Oregon State took advantage of the turnover they got by the early interception by Dalton. And Katz looks comfortable. Uh, the, the only thing for Oregon State I think they've got to do in this possession is they've got to get Jaquiz Rogers the ball in space. Right. They've handed it off to him. He hasn't had much room to run. Look to see him throw the ball to him. Try to get him out in space, see if he can make somebody miss. He's in the backfield right now. They haven't tried the screen pass yet, but it's a valuable tool. Play action. Katz throws it deep out, and it tips. Nice job getting a hand on that to break it up. Evie Loye, who's had kind of a tough game so far, Made a nice play on that one. Yeah, he did. He had the underneath coverage. So he was responsible for getting underneath that out route that James Rogers was running, and he almost got the interception. Alex Ebiole, a senior grad student, in fact, out of Garland, Texas, makes the play and brings up a second down to 10. Catch with three wideouts and his tight end camp on the right side. And here's Jaquiz Rogers trying to make his own space, and he does out for a first down. Nice run, the best of the night. For Jaquiz, he got 14. Well, he's powerful. He's built low to the ground, and he's not going to come down with arm tackles. So you better swarm to the football when he gets it. A little delay draw. Nice job in there blocking by his right guard, Burke Ellis, number 74, that, that kind of sprung him. And then look at his brother, James Rogers, blocking for him on the second level. So first down out at the 34-yard line. Give it to him again. This time, tough sledding on the inside. Maybe got a yard. Todd was talking about James Rogers. One of the things he likes to do for his little brother, who's 13 months younger, is block out there for him. I love the way he runs. I mean, he runs hard and uh, makes a few guys miss. And having to, having to block for him is very hard because you don't know which way he's going to go. So you try to give him a two-way go when you're blocking a defensive back or a linebacker. So I just had to say running. Like, just being able to see him out there make a few moves. He's made a few, but he hasn't broken a big one. The 14-yarder earlier in this drive is the biggest so far. Cats fires and slipping out there on his break was James Rogers. So it's incomplete. It'll bring up third down and long. TCU came with the blitz. It was single coverage out there. And that time, Greg McCoy, who's been victimized a couple times tonight, got the better of it with James Rogers. There's contact. And as he's coming out of that contact, James Rogers slips and falls down, and the, the pass goes incomplete. And the blitz came from that side, so Katz had the right idea where he wanted to go with the ball. And now it's third and long. And the fans here coming to life for the TCU defense. Three-man rush. Katz has time. And now he's going to try to tuck it and get what he can. It won't be enough, but he's close to the first down. About a yard shot. You don't see TCU's aggressive defense do that too often. A three-man rush, and they dropped eight. But, you know, sometimes you choose to blitz a young quarterback. Sometimes you choose to confuse one. And they confused him a little bit this time. Way too many defenders there for him to find an open man. 
And the umpire. Wiley Willingham uh, yeah. took a pretty big shot there, didn't he? He sure did. Tyler Luttrell got him right on the side of the head. But he popped right up and he's ready to go. He's a wily one. Johnny Hecker <laughs> to punt. Jeremy Curley back deep. And they're going to take the punt. The throw is complete. First down and a bunch more. Jordan Poyer on the pass from Johnny Hecker. I saw them work on this Wednesday in practice. Hecker was a high school quarterback before he came to Oregon State. He's an excellent punter, and he just raised up and made a beautiful throw to the out route. And he has the choice of picking which side he wants to work. No indecision, no hesitation, and a perfect throw to the outside to Poyer for the first down. Remember, a fake punt by Boise State right. what did in TCU in the Fiesta Bowl last year. So here's a 22-yard pickup and new life for the Oregon State offense at the 34-yard line. Cats watch it all. Going to the corner, touchdown, Jordan Bishop. Four yards for the score. Boy, what a nice play call that time by Danny Langsford. Langsdorf, the offensive coordinator. That was nice. Kahoot in for the point after. Moments ago, it looked like TCU would be on offense going the other way. Instead, in two big plays, it's 14 to 7, Oregon State. Mike Riley pulled one out of his hat first with a fake punt as Hecker throws a dart to Poyer on the outside. And then just one play later, Ryan Katz in his first start, his second touchdown pass of the night. The Beavers trying to surprise the number six team in the country, 14-7. the Cowboy Classic 14-7 after an 81 yard drive was capped by Ryan Katz second touchdown throw of the night and it was a beauty he put it in the one spot that it had to be and we'll take a look at it here in a minute now, two beautiful throws in that drive yeah. Hecker had the first <laughs> one <laughs> Josh Boyce and Jeremy Curley are back deep Awaiting Justin Cahoot's kick. And it's short to the near side. Curley's going to have to track it down at about the 7. Curley out across the 25 to the 26-yard line. It's time to take a look at our protection spotlight brought to you by Castro GTX. And Todd will pick it up here. Well, I'll tell you, here's what TCU's thinking. We've got to account for James Rogers and Jaquiz Rogers. Where are they going to be? But they didn't account for Jordan Bishop, who's going to run the post route for the touchdown. The linemen do their job. There's your protection. Yep. And then the beautiful throw by Katz. So now let's see if TCU's got an answer. Trailing by a touchdown. Give to Ed Wesley. They're trying to establish a little ground game, and Wesley just got him some. It'll be a first down run, pickup of 11. Wesley and Tucker almost interchangeable, really. Both went over 600 yards last year. Both averaged over six yards a carry. And they had 12 rushing touchdowns between the two of them. And running the football is what TCU did the best last year. They were fifth in the country in running the football. Averaged over 239 yards per game. And everybody jumps here. Let's see if it's a false start. Or if there was contact made by Oregon State defensively. Haven't had a lot of flags so far, which is good for a first game. That ball offside, number 78, defense, five yard penalty, still first down. It indeed was against. Mike Riley's Beavers, Brandon Olander.
Monday night big game. Number three, Boise State. Number 10, Virginia Tech. It's the All-State kickoff in the capital part of Dick Sporting Goods kickoff week. Monday night, 8 o'clock. That'll be another dandy. One of three games involving teams both ranked in the top 25. The one you're watching right now is one as well. As the first down run by Tucker, uh, Wesley rather, out to midfield where Mitchell made the stop. I think it's a good idea by TCU's offense. They've got co-offensive coordinators, Jared Anderson and Justin Fuente. I think last year in that loss to Boise State, they got away from their running game a little bit. Only 36 yards rushing on 20 carries. They they got a little pass heavy in that game. Maybe panicked a little bit when things weren't going well, but their strength is running the football. Dalton off his back foot just puts one up for grabs and is going to be pass interference. Luckily, actually, for Bart yeah. Johnson, Lance Mitchell, I think, just got lost and got tangled up. And that'll be a first down for TCU. Well, what happened was Bart Johnson was so open. Defense number 10, 15 year old penalty, automatic first down. Bart Johnson was so wide open that Andy Dalton just wanted to get the ball to him, but he didn't have enough on it, and so Johnson had to wait for the ball. And when that happened, Lance Mitchell was able to make contact. This is actually a better play for Oregon State because if Dalton throws that deep enough, it's a touchdown. As a result, it's just a 15-yard penalty against the defense. So it puts it at the 35-yard line for the first down. And a two tight end set for the first time tonight for the Horned Frogs. And Dalton will be all alone in the backfield. He's going to be joined by Tucker momentarily, though. First and ten. Tucker. Inside run, they got about three. Down to the 32. Tony Wilson made the stop along with Keith Pankey, the linebacker. Pankey coming back from an injury. That's been quite a story. Torn Achilles. They had some Achilles problems on this team on the defensive side of the football, but you played with his daddy. Yeah, I sure did. Irv was a big offensive lineman, was a senior when I was a freshman, and got drafted by the Rams. He actually ruptured both of his Achilles in his pro career. So uh, maybe it's hereditary. <laughs> Second down at seven. Play action. Dalton, plenty of time. Fires near side. What a catch. Inside the 20 by Curtis Clay. And boy, Andy Dalton got some smoke on that one. Pickup of 13. Tui Mane was out there covering, but not covering well enough from a throw like this one. Yeah, strong throw from the hash to the opposite side. Good blend of run pass right now for TCU. If you put this Oregon State defense back on their heels a little bit. TCU going without a huddle, and they drew Haya, I think the guy that jumped in there offsides, and they're going to get a free five out of this one, too. And that will give Dalton a chance to run over the sideline. Defense, five-yard penalty, still first down. Stephen Pia was the guy that jumped in the middle. And he's pointing at himself as if to say, my fault. He is a load. Yeah. An amazing story. I mean, he, he was a former rugby player from Tonga, didn't play football until he was a senior in high school, and has developed rapidly into now a guy that NFL scouts are saying is one of the top two or three defensive tackles coming out next year. Dalton gives it off on the sweep. Wesley to the corner, and it's first and goal. Got it down to about the two-yard line. I think it's where they're going to spot it. Pickup of 11. That's one of the best runs tonight by Ed Wesley. Yeah, a, a more determined running game for TCU in this drive. The other thing that the running game does is it punishes the defense. It, it takes some steam out of them when you fire off the ball and run the football at them. So Oregon State defense trying to bring some different guys in and some subs. And Oregon State will take a timeout to make sure they get the defense they want out there. So it's going to be first and goal for TCU. But right now, let's check in with Reese. Well, we're 14 to 7 here, but two yards away from being tied once again. Oregon State called that timeout. They bring out their defensive alignment. But TCU set up before that timeout. They had 
Antoine Hicks in a full house backfield with the fullback Luke Shivers and Matthew Tucker the tailback and that's what they've got again inside handoff pickup of about a yard as Shivers got him close he's not a bad choice he's had seven career touches and he scored four touchdowns Shivers that is <laughs> three touchdowns on the ground on four carries before that one two career receptions have also netted of a touchdown that time he got about a foot short now curly in motion on a second down and goal bootleg throw to the end zone wide open curly touchdown Andy Dalton a one yard touchdown throw to Jeremy Curley really like the play calling on that drive for TCU they made a commitment to the running game that set up play action and then down on the goal line on second down a great play action down the good fake by Dalton he hid the football and then the nice soft toss to Curley Evans in for the point after and it's up and good and it caps another long TCU drive we've had some great looking drives tonight by both teams tie game 14 14 seven play march in 74 yards led by Andy Dalton and we're even here with 839 remaining in the first half of course a lot of conference shuffling going on in the offseason as Utah and Colorado will become part of the Pac-10 the Big Ten Nebraska will be in next year BYU the announcement this week that they go independent and leave this Mountain West Conference that TCU belongs to with more on that let's go to Holly Rowe Holly. well the coolest thing is this is the conference commissioner for the Pac-10 check out how he's keeping up on his other schools right now and their scores he's got the iPad going I mean this is a pretty technology savvy guy I'm, I'm impressed I just have to say why have you taken it to that level well we're in the most technologically advanced stadium in the world new cowboy stadium we've got a 60 60 yard scoreboard here and we got four teams playing at the moment it's a good way for me to catch up while I'm on the road for those of us who want to catch up on what's happening with the conferences you've said that your university presidents expect change what do you think is the priority for you now after you've added two schools yeah. Well, we're getting ready for upcoming media negotiations, just looking to market the conference more as a national brand. Uh, the results of the Pac-10 on the field, on the court, have been terrific, but Pac-10's been a little passive, and we're just looking to step up our game a little bit. How likely would it be that we see further expansion? Well, for us, I think we're focused on 12, but I, I wouldn't be surprised if you see further expansion over time. I think over history, there have been regular moves, and I wouldn't be surprised if you see super conferences in the future. You see by BYU go independent. Pat Hayden at USC has made some remarks about that. What concerns do you have about losing members? I think amongst the top six BCS conferences, it really doesn't make any sense for schools to think about independence. The scale you get by being part of a conference, the leverage, the exposure, the revenue, the academic affiliation, the home for other sports, especially a conference like the Pac-10, where you're, you know, won more NCAA championships than any other. I don't think that's something the top six conferences really think about. All right. Thank you, Commissioner. And thanks for being so cool on the sideline. I'm just impressed by that iPad. <laughs> Boy, when Larry got that job, he hit the ground with the wheels churning. And so the face of that conference will be dramatically changed. Loss of one by the quiz Rogers. Tank Carter made the stop. Tank's a preseason choice as the defensive player of the year in the Mountain West. Andy Dalton, his quarterback, preseason choice, and the guy that won the offensive player of the year award last season. Larry Scott, I'm impressed with what he's done, and I think the Pac-10 is going to be the most exciting conference to watch this year because of the, the talent level, and especially at the skill position this season. Well, they've got great running backs, some big arm quarterbacks, and great receivers, as we've seen James Rogers tonight, and this kid might be right in the mix, Cats, although nice play defensively by Greg McCoy to level Kalahuni after he made the catch. Oregon State, you know, you talk about USC, of course, they've had a great record in national championships. And Oregon, they're cross-state rivals. But you look at what Oregon State Mike Riley's done and now his 10th season and his second stint, really, at Oregon State after going to be the head coach of the San Diego Chargers. 
They've been sensational. They just haven't been good in three October road games. One and 12. Tonight they're playing a lot better. Katz, boy, he wanted to wind up and flip it, but he comes back to his safety valve, Rodgers, and it's a first down. Boy, great protection again, and Katz didn't panic. You know, he stayed in there, he surveyed the defense, he knew that he was protected, and he makes the nice throw to Rodgers on the sideline. Watch his protection. Now, it's only a three-man rush, but Katz doesn't panic. He says, I got five blocking three. I can wait until James opens up and he gets the completion. Greg McCoy and James Rogers had a hand fight going on there. They both had a piece of jersey of the other guy. It nets Rogers another catch and another first down at the 40 yard line. Here's a fly sweep. Marcus Wheaton. And Wheaton out of bounds as we check in with Reese Davis again. Reese. Last year, Oklahoma opened up the college football season here at the Cowboys Classic when we saw Sam Bradford go down to injury. That we want to avoid tonight. Ryan Katz wants to avoid the blitz. <laughs> he throws one in the ground. Closest guy was Quiz Rogers. Tyler Luttrell and Wayne Daniels were chasing him down from behind. Yeah. Well, they tried to set up a little play action screen to Jack Quiz Rogers. It was a blitz coming from the opposite side by TCU, and it's really a pretty smart play by Katz because uh, that play had no chance. Well, guys, knowing that they'd see a lot of blitzes tonight, Ryan Katz prepared for it in the offseason. Every single scrimmage, every practice, they would have an extra blitz period. That's something he's been trying to get better at picking up, guys. He did a good job there. Here he is on third and four. Incomplete intended for Aaron Nichols. Nice job by Katz of just sliding away from the pressure, but then he had to throw back across his body, and he didn't get that one quite where he wanted to. Well, it's okay to slide, but right here he's got to reset his feet because when he slides left and tries to throw, you can't be accurate that way. Slide away from the pressure and then quickly reset your feet and make an accurate throw because he had a man open. Well, Johnny Hecker will be in punt formation. Remember, they faked the punt last time, kept their drive alive as he threw a 22-yard completion that ended up leading to a touchdown. We're going to assume that he's going to punt it away to Jeremy Curley. And whistle stopped play before he got the kick away. Clark with snap. Delay a game. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Still fourth down. Well, they can back him up and he can take a longer shot at it if he wants to. And with that, we get our trivia question for tonight. Who's the only defensive player to win the Davy O'Brien Award? Davy O'Brien, of course, was a TCU alum. It's a little bit of a trick question. As you're thinking quarterback, think outside the box, folks. Here's Hecker. And Curley. Fair catches. At about the 16-yard line, 43-yard kick. TCU tied it up last time. They'd like to get the lead back. They've got six minutes to work with when we come back. The 2010 Cowboys Classic, brought to you by Kingsford Charcoal. For your chance to win a $10,000 backyard makeover, play Kingsford College Showdown on ESPN.com. Reminder, they're going to wrap things up at AMS tomorrow night. Atlanta Motor Speedway in Atlanta. The Sprint Cup Series is in Atlanta. Only two races remain for Jamie McMurray and Mark Martin to get off the bubble and then into the chase. Coverage starts. NASCAR countdown at 7. Racing begins at 7.30. Latrell went off favoring. Yeah, it looked like he's in a lot of pain. I think pain. it's his hamstring. And, and that's a that could be a critical loss. You know, they start three safeties in this 4-2-5 defense, and he's one of the three. The offense for TCU out there, they got six minutes. And two timeouts to work with after a nice drive last time. Matthew Tucker with Dalton in the backfield. Andy with a play action, rolls to throw. And does. And throws a strike. Incomplete. Antoine Hicks had a play on it and couldn't hold it. Let's take a look at our Chick-fil-A drive recap, though. The last time they got the ball... 
nice play by Curtis Clay to snare that shot from Dalton. Then it was Ed Wesley that got it down close to the goal line. And then Andy Dalton throws it out to Jeremy Curley for the touchdown. And that was what tied us up to cap a 74-yard march. Now they, they got the touchdown by throwing it, and they made a couple completions, but it was power running. I mean, they punished the Oregon State defense in that drive. Dalton flushed out of the pocket, trying to get rid of it to the sideline, and he wow. actually completed that oh, on the far side. Are you kidding me to Curley? And Dalton was falling down when he threw that thing. Steven Pia was coming like a locomotive. <laughs> Andy Dalton did this. Well, he does a great job just getting away. And then the strength, I mean, he was just trying to throw this away. He wasn't trying to throw a completion. He was trying to throw it up in the seats. But he didn't get enough on it, but he did get enough on it to get a completion. And that gives him a chance to pick up the third down, third and five. Seven out of 11 so far. A touchdown and an interception for Andy Dalton, the senior quarterback out of Katy, Texas. They've run every third down play so far. He rides his tailback and then tries to do it himself, and he's got another first down. Fourth time he's picked up a first on a third down run. Because the third down yardage needed has been manageable, they've been able to run every third down play. And that just in increases your chances. It's a little pistol formation, fake to the back, and it's the keep by the quarterback. A little different formation on this third down play, but the same result. Quarterback keeps has an option threat and gets the first down at the 29 yard line Dalton play action deep out and overshot Curley is intended receiver Holly well guys let trail over here on the sideline they're not sure if it's a pulled left hamstring or if just he's cramping up he's trying to walk around on the sideline to see if the pain will go away but he keeps grabbing his head shaking his head it seems like he felt something serious guys this would be a huge loss think about it last year this time he was a fourth string wide receiver he said we need you at safety and so he did everything he had to do he became their starting safety and this would be a huge loss for them not emotionally but also x and o wise he's hoping they won't have to test it until the third quarter and maybe at halftime they'll have a little more time to rest but right now Here's Dalton trying to throw a block for his tailback, who came back the other way and picked up about four. Brandon Harden made the stop on Ed Wesley. If you're looking for the first time and you go, wait a minute, I thought I was watching TCU, and I don't get the uniforms. <laughs> As you take a look at Wesley on this cutback run, and the quarterback getting a decent block, a little bit in there for Andy, put his head in there. New uniforms that they've never worn before, and it's... Uh, Horn frog skin basically for the helmets and the pants. So they got white, kind of whitish silver pants and the same with the helmets. I can't explain it. It looks like skin though for the most part. They got a lot going on. They got a lot going on. And here's Dalton. He's got something going on on the ground again. Although he's tripped up short of the first down and flags fly in into the secondary. This was near the end of the play, and I didn't get a preliminary signal on what it's about. And again, a run on third down. Might be a holding call that will give TCU a first down if it's holding defensively. Wow. That could be a real break because they finally got him stopped. It was actually when Dalton was just starting to hit the turf on his way down. Illegal block in the back, number 80. Offense. Yeah, there okay. we go. Hey, <laughs> over the play. Fourth down. The preliminary signals by yeah. Carl Richards were all going the wrong direction. That's what had us bamboozled a little bit. So now they will bring out the punting unit. Anson Kelton in punt formation. And James Rogers back deep. I'm just guessing, but I'm going to go ahead and guess that Anson Kelton's the biggest punter in college football. I, I, at 6'4", 28. I think you're right. He hit this one a mile in the air. James Rogers has got to take a fair catch call and does at about the 15-yard line. Still got 329 remaining in the first half. Both teams with 14 on the board. Stick around.
Mike Riley, the head coach of the Beavers, this is where your yep. quarterback making a first start. Just be careful, right? He's got to be smart right here. He's done everything that Mike Riley could possibly hope. He's thrown the ball well. He's managed the offense. Don't get careless or greedy right now here before the end of the half. From the 16-yard line. And they'll keep it on the ground. The quiz Rodgers keeps his balance. Gets what he can. And picked up about three. Gained a few yards but lost his shoe. Yeah. <laughs> now Latrell yeah. is out. As Holly mentioned, uh, that hamstring injury not allowing him to come back in. So his replacement is Colin Jones, a senior from Bridgeport, Texas, number 28. Here he is right here. So this is a critical substitution in this defensive scheme. The safeties are the most active guys in this defense. That's heavy pressure. Deep ball's got a man in Bishop. Just about made the catch. And he's got to pick himself up and readjust his knee brace. Boy, he hung in till the last moment. Yeah, kind of got sandwiched in there by Mapunga and Yendry. Both of them in there for the hit on the quarterback. He does make a nice throw under duress off his back foot. And again, here's where he's got to be smart. Third down and eight deep in his own territory. Don't let TCU seize the momentum right here before halftime. Jordan Jenkins in the backfield. He came in when Quiz Rogers went out with the shoe issue. Crossing pattern. Oh, what a hit. Put on Aaron Nichols by who else? Tank Carter. So it's three and out, and Nichols is still down after that collision. We well, don't collide with a tank and get up right away. It was a clean hit. Just led with his shoulder. TCU called a timeout because that was a completion, so the clock was going to continue to roll. So Gary Patterson choosing to call a timeout to make sure the clock stopped. Thank Carter, the top returning tackler on this team, and he laid the wood to Aaron Nichols on that one. Tank Carter was a world champion BMX rider back when he was a kid. Here's Tank, a.k.a. Ricky. Took and the he, lead right he away. Take, huh? He takes the lead and he never gives it up. That's a wire-to-wire -wire job. <laughs> that's a video from a race he won in Paris. And once he became a champion, he said, you know what, that's it. Put the bike away, give me the shoulder pads. Doing pretty well at both. Johnny Hecker set to punt. spot on the field where maybe Jeremy Curley can get a return out of one of these. And here he comes on the fly at the 43. Curley down the sideline. Oh, he would have been gone. Hecker has saved the touchdown. Well, Hecker better have saved the touchdown because that was a poor kick. It was low and it was right to Curley. I mean, that was a bad kick at the wrong time for Oregon State. Watch this ball leave Hecker's foot. Low Curley's able to catch it moving up on the fly with a full head of steam. And so Hecker better stop the touchdown there. 34-yard return of a 35-yard kick, and now TCU is in business at the 23-yard line. They've got one timeout remaining. First and 10, 228 till halftime. Dalton fakes the throw, quarterback draw. And nice job by Dwight Roberson, the captain of the defense, the linebacker, to stay home and make the tackle. Still plenty of time for TCU to work. Yeah, lots of time for TCU. You mentioned the one timeout, but over two minutes. So nice situation for Andy Dalton to show his leadership, his senior leadership right now. We've got five receivers out there, including Bart Johnson and Sky Dawson. With Ed Wesley, the tailback, the slot man, to the top of your screen. So it's Andy Dalton all by his lonesome in the backfield on second and ten. Quick fire inside the 20 and a big hit put on Sky Dawson. Now he paid for that four-yard pickup, too. Brandon Harden, the junior out of Honolulu, said, how are you? Right at the sideline. <laughs>
brings up a third down. Now remember, TCU has run every third down, I think, to this point. I bet they throw this one, though. This one's a little longer. Well, they could have <laughs> optioned it to Wesley, and he's got the first down and first and goal. Inside the 10 and a pickup of 10. Every time they've gotten that pistol formation, which simply means the tailback lines up behind the quarterback in the shotgun. Watch, they start out. They run a speed option that way. And they catch the, uh, the defense out flank. Bart Johnson, the wide receiver, with a nice block on the outside. So they've got it first and goal now. Inside the 10. Wesley again. Weaving his way. Touchdown. Horn Frogs have the lead for the first time tonight. Nice run. Ross Evans in for the point after. I don't know that you can totally blame the touchdown before halftime on a bad punt, but it certainly didn't help the cause much. 21-14, TCU. Well, it allowed TCU to be ultra-aggressive and just go at this Oregon State defense with great field position. And again, they went back to the power running to get down there. Watch this last run by Wesley. Nice job. They sealed things out. They blocked down and a nice kick-out block by the right guard, Josh Vernon, number 78, opens it up for Wesley. I've been impressed with Wesley's running tonight. We don't talk much about the ground game at TCU necessarily because those guys split so much duty last year, meaning Wesley and Tucker. And, of course, there's no LaDainian Tomlinson on this roster right now, but he's done a nice job here in the first half. 63 yards on eight carries and a touchdown. So still 49 seconds remaining, barring a big kick return. You would think that TCU would have the lead at the break, but there's been a lot of fireworks offensively in this first half. TCU has played great defense over the years, but the bottom line, they've won 31 consecutive games when they've gained more yards rushing than passing. Running the football is what they do best on offense. Sharpless kick. James Rogers from the six. James Rogers trying to find himself a seam and got out to about the 30. Kenny Kane made the stop on the kick return. Well, a little bit earlier we asked you our trivia question, and it was who's the only defensive player to win the Davey O'Brien Award? The trick in that is Davey O'Brien Award's a quarterback award now, but Mike Singletary of Baylor won it twice, 79 and 80. Davey O'Brien, who played here and was a Heisman Trophy winner in the late 30s, one of the greats after he took over after Sammy Barr. Talking about one good one taking over after another good one. Cats, deep middle, and nobody home there it was tended for Jordan Bishop. Davey O'Brien Award, speaking of that, my partner, yeah. former Davey O'Brien Award winner. My other older partner, Bob Greasy, just named as the Davy O'Brien Legends winner that will be presented to Greece back uh, in uh, late February. So, Bob, congratulations. I'll be there. It's a great event. I go back every year. Tremendous event at the Fort Worth Club. Here's a draw play. Quiz Rogers going nowhere. Wayne Daniels had a nice first half. And he stayed home. That's a loss on the play. So they've done a nice job bottling up Jaquiz Rogers from his tailback position. Mike Riley took a shot on first down to see if they could get one completion. And Katz kind of threw it in the middle of nowhere, and he said, that's it. Yep. We'll run the clock out now, go in at halftime, make some adjustments, see how we can get Quiz a little bit more involved. And a late touchdown by TCU after just having to go 23 yards following the punt return by Curley is the difference in the ballgame so far. 
TCU will get the ball to start the second half, so momentum clearly on their side right now. Well, the TCU faithful happy. Andy Dalton has a touchdown pass in the first half, 21-14, as we check in with Holly. Well, Coach, there are so many unknowns about Ryan Katz here. What do you think he's done in the first half? Well, I think he's made some plays, and we haven't been very consistent, but he's made some plays, hit a couple of good passes, handled himself pretty well, I think. You know, we're not near as consistent as we need to be to beat this team, and that, that drive right before the half by them after the, after the punt return was a— was not a good deal. So we got to recover from that and uh, get a stop early and go after him again. How do you get Quiz loose? We haven't seen much from him. No, you know, that's the bi the biggest part of this game right now is they're running the ball better than we are. So we've got to find a way to get him going. They're, they're a very good rush defense. We've just got to do a better job of finding some stuff that he can do because he can run. we just got to find some lanes for him. All right. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Mike Riley's team had two leads in this ball game, but they gave up the lead in the final minute. Before the half, TCU at the break leads at 21-14. Time now for the Wendy's Halftime Report. Reese Davis, Lou Holtz, Mark May. Fellas, take it away. This is Dick's Sporting Goods Kickoff Week. Welcome back, Darlington, Texas, the Cowboy Classic presented by Hampton Hotels. The home team, TCU, ranked sixth in the country, leading number 24, Oregon State, by a score of 21 to 14. Welcome back to Arlington and Cowboy Stadium, everybody. Brad Nestler along with Todd Blackledge. Holly Rowe will join us in just a second. Partner, I think there's a couple things as we go into the third quarter. I don't know if it's imperative that... Uh, Oregon State gets a stop on TCU yeah. to start this third quarter, but they got to get Jaquiz Rogers somehow yeah. involved offensively. Yeah, I think what Mike Riley said to Holly coming off the field is exactly right. TCU's ability to run and Oregon State's inability to run in that first half was the difference in the ball game. They've got to get Jaquiz more involved. This is a guy that gained over a thousand yards back-to-back -back season. Right. He only had 24 yards in that first half, and 15 of it came on one run. So TCU. Did a great job of bottling him up in the first half. So we'll see how that develops. TCU is going to have the football first. Remember, they got the almost a gift touchdown in the final minute of the second quarter to take the lead for the first time. They have it as we start the third quarter, 21-14. And the kick will go to Jeremy Curley right at the goal line. Curley heads to the middle of the field, hurdles the man. we got a flag down way back here at about the 35-yard line. This year, wedge blocking is illegal on kick returns. I don't know that that might have been the call. We didn't get a preliminary signal again. Here is the call. During the return, holding number 35 of the return team, 10-yard penalty, first down. That's what happens when you don't wedge block. You hold people. Let's check in with Holly. Well, coaches are never happy, but Gary Patterson was as happy as he could be with how his defense played against the run in the first half. What he didn't like was how they played against the big play. He said, I knew exactly what pass was coming because of the formation. I told the defense, and they still gave up that big pass play. So, guys, he wants them to tighten it up there, but he said, we've got to quit turning the ball over. He wants a senior quarterback to show some leadership in that regard. Here's a senior quarterback in the shotgun inside the 10-yard line. As the line of scrimmage is a 14 for the Horn Frogs. And the quick throw out in the flat to Sky Dawson, trying to use that speed. You saw him use it in the first half on one of his pass receptions. Lance Mitchell puts him down, though, as he got out to the 20 yard line. Well, interestingly, right now, Stephen Paya is not in the ballgame for Oregon State. Their best defensive lineman is standing on the sideline to start the third quarter. And that can't be good for Oregon State. Here's the pistol set again with Ed Wesley, who's very, very efficient in the first half in the tailback spot behind Andy Dalton. Dalton may have changed things up there on the second and five. He tells Wesley to call. Rides it in his gut, and Wesley broke out of the pack. 
Out across the 25 to the 27, and Wesley's got a first down. Pick up of nine. It's a big offensive line for TCU. They got some guys playing in some different spots. Marcus Cannon, the starting left tackle, number 61, is 6'6". Six, six. They list him at 350. I think he's bigger than that. He was a couple biscuits yeah. bigger than that. Yeah. He was a right tackle last year. He's the starting left tackle. Zach Roth is the starting right tackle. He was a guard last year, but they're big, big bodies up there, and they're having their way right now, running the football. Dalton slips screen to Curley, and that got it out to about the 30-yard line. Pick up of about three. Marcus Cannon, right now, they say he's around 263. That's kind of the rumor around the locker room. As Todd said, he was the right tackle last year, and Jared Anderson, the offensive coordinator, calls him the dancing bear. That big, but still agile, and uh, he is a load on the left side. It's interesting. He said it takes him a couple weeks during training camp to get back interested <laughs> in football. He just, uh, especially when it's 105 yeah, degrees yeah. in practice. <laughs> Pie is back in there now, the defensive front for the Beavers. Out of the shotgun. And Wesley got the corner. Turned up and short of the first down by about one, I think. Ed Wesley quietly putting a nice night together. Ten carries for 77 yards and a touchdown. Starting cornerback Brandon Harden just walked off the field after that last play. Number 17 for Oregon State. Out of the game. TCU, Todd, did a great job in the first half of their third down conversions. The only two times they didn't pick him up. They were third and six or longer. This is a short one. And yeah, they average third and five point five to go. And there's another conversion. Matthew Tucker dances his way into the second level. And the first down went on a quick snap there. Yeah, they huddled. So it wasn't a no huddle, but it was quick to the line and quick snap. And they still caught the Oregon State defense not ready to play. Seven out of nine on third down. You win a lot of football games playing like that. You mentioned that the key to being successful on third down is manageable distance. I mean, they haven't had to throw the football and make tough throws on third down. They've been able to run it. First down at the 42. Opening drive, third quarter for the Horn Frogs. Here's a counter. Tucker. And Tucker now getting in there and spelling Ed Wesley, and he's getting his yards as we check in with Holly. Well, guys, all through the preseason and since last season, Jaquiz Rogers was never tackled through practice. In fact, some of their staffs told me he wasn't tackled one time. So in the first half, several times I saw his body language. He was starting to get tired, and now look at him over here on the bench. He's just kind of chilling, relaxing. I don't know if he's tired, but the body language suggests it. Just wondering how hard is it to suddenly get tackled in a game when you aren't used to it throughout the course of the preseason. He doesn't look like he's into it at all, does he? Seventh play of the TCU drive. Opening up the third quarter. As we said, you'd like to get the football back defensively. What a grab by Bart Johnson. Going down. Got his hands out there and snared that one at the 38-yard line. It was a great effort by Johnson. I thought this ball hit the ground. I mean, that's what it looked like to me. But Johnson made a great effort for it. Going down. Oh, Whoa. what a great catch. About two wow. inches left. <laughs> that was a tremendous catch. Yeah, it really was. You talk about... Getting your hands out and catching the football in front of you instead of using your body. You can't do it any better than that. Drive stays alive and moves to the 38-yard line of Oregon State. Here's Tucker. Puts his head down and dives inside the 35. Lance Mitchell, another tackle. Mitchell's been a busy safety back there. He's made a lot of stops tonight. Well, you mentioned you don't know if it was absolutely necessary that Oregon State gets a stop in this drive. I think it is pretty critical because the TCU defense had dialed it up there in the second quarter a little bit and uh, tightened down. And if they put another score up here, it could be uh, it could be a long second half for Oregon State. They put Wesley the tailback out in a bunch to the right. They're going to throw it back to the left, though, and it's Dawson. Uh, beg your pardon. Hicks. Antoine Hicks with the catch. And he's down to the 22 yard line. Pick up a 13 more. Andy Dalton mixing it up pretty well right now. Yeah. Well, they have weapons everywhere. They've got versatile backs. They've got talented wide receivers you have to account for. And a quarterback who can run. This is a very versatile offensive football team to go with 
again a defense that's been ranked number one in the country the last two years in a row. We asked them what they are missing offensively. They say, well, you miss Ryan Christian, who's a wide receiver type running back playing for the Toronto Argonauts of the CFL. But other than that, they got all their weapons back. And here's Dalton on a keeper. And Andy got to the 22 yard line. Paya made the stop, lost his lid in the process. Stephen Paya, after a workout in the spring, bench pressed 225 pounds 44 times, which would be one off the NFL combine record. That's how strong this guy is. He came in here yesterday when the three of us were at the walkthrough. And he just looked around. And he went, "Wow!" All he could <laughs> all he could do is look at the video board here in this stadium. And he looked like a little kid, but he's anything but a little kid on that defensive front. Dalton throws out. Flags are down. Wesley trying to break tackles and does inside the 20. But again, penalty marker at the line of scrimmage. Illegal motion. Number 88, offense. Five-yard penalty. Repeat second down. Jimmy Young got a head start. Well, the only thing that appears to be stopping TCU right now is TCU because uh, Andy Dalton is doing a brilliant job of spreading the ball around, mixing in the run. He's four for four on this drive to four different receivers. That one didn't count because of the penalty. TCU has got 27 seniors on their roster, which ties for the number one amounts in all of college football. So they've got leadership from that quarterback position, and they've got a lot of other guys who are leaders as well. Here's the option and the pitch to Tucker, and Tucker is inside the 15, close to another first down. Roberson with a tackle. Well, nice one-two punch between Wesley and Tucker. Yeah, they have really hurt him with the option. Well, they've gotten outside. Dalton does a nice job of making decisions, taking it to the decision point, getting it outside, outflanking the defense, wide receivers blocking downfield. And they're, they're wearing out this Oregon State defense because they're making them run side to side. Not only are they not getting TCU's offense off the field, the quarter's half over. Dalton throws, and it's intercepted. There's the one mistake. And Dwight Roberson with a second interception of Dalton tonight. That puts the halt and the stop yeah. to what TCU was doing. And that was a huge play for Oregon State because they weren't stopping him physically, but they got this interception that they needed. They're down a touchdown, but they're on offense when we come back. Twenty one fourteen Oregon State stops any further damage with that interception TCU as we take a look at the red zone brought to you by Verizon an interception and three touchdowns in four possessions in the red zone tonight but a costly one in the red zone by the redhead on that last throw. Dwight Roberson's first career interception gives it back to his offense. At the 13 yard line, Ryan Katz loads and fires, and he oh, throws it right back. back. Almost. Oh boy. Oh boy. Jason Teague had it right between the two and the seven and couldn't hold on. And Katz now is one of his last six, Todd. Yeah. Well, they're trying to get the ball to the tight end, Halahuni. He was double covered. I mean, there was not even a place for Katz to throw the football, and he was very, very lucky because he zeroed in on Halahuni to try to get him involved in the offense and uh, very fortunate that wasn't picked off. Jason Teague, one of the new starting corners, Raphael Priest and Nick Sanders were four-year starters for TCU in those positions. So new starting corners tonight. He almost had the football right back for his offense. Second and 10 for the 13. The quiz spins and got it out. Tough run to the 21. One of his better runs of the night. Well, he made a couple guys miss. There were guys that were unblocked. And Jack Wiz was able to make a miss right about the line of scrimmage. Right here, he makes two safeties miss. And he's able to pick up five or six yards. I've said before to an Oregon State games, Quiz might be short, but he's not little. He is poured into that body. And he can take a shot and deliver one as well. Big third down right here. Maybe the biggest of the night so far for Oregon State. 
Cats quick throw. Got it first down. James Rogers. And he is going to be horse collar. That's going to be another 15 yards. Boy, did you see James protecting the football? I mean, he was not letting go of this football. He had it high and tight. Tanner Brock's the guy that is going to be guilty of the horse collar. When I was up there Wednesday after practice, the Rogers brothers both were running sprints. Personal foul, horse collar tackle. Number 35, defense. 15-yard penalty enforcement, end of run, automatic first down. They were running sprints together, carrying a football, and carrying it just like this. Watch them secure the ball after the catch. High and tight, not getting rid of the football, and getting extra yardage. We talked about the Rogers brothers having so much family and friends from their hometown of Richmond, Texas here tonight. And they've got something to cheer about now because the Beavers are back in Hornfog territory. It's 42 yard line with a first down. Trailing by a touchdown. Cats going deep. Got a man out there and overshot him. Marcus Wheaton. And again, you see the arm of Ryan Katz. Maybe a little more air under that. That might be a touchdown, but he got it out there. And got it all the way to the end zone. I'm surprised they still have not been able to throw the ball to Jacquez Rogers yet. Now, last year, he caught 78 balls. And that was up from 29 his freshman year. And they've not thrown it to him yet tonight. It'll be blown dead. Yeah, that timeout was called from the sideline. Mike Riley had to call timeout there. Timeout, Oregon State. This is the first of the half. Timeout. With 6.33 remaining in the third quarter, head coach of the Beavers wants to talk it over with his troops. They've got a golden opportunity to try to tie this up when we come back. Back at the Cowboy Classic presented by Hampton Hotels. 21-14 TCU with six and a half to go in the third quarter. With Todd Blackledge and Holly Rowe, I'm Brad Nestler. Nice to have you along on this Saturday night from Arlington, Texas. Oregon State trails by a touchdown. They got it second and ten, though, in TCU territory. And deep middle, and what a strike thrown by Katz. Down to the 22-yard line to Halahuni, and he's still heading toward the end zone. Now the first time they were able to get him involved, remember they tried to throw to him on the first play of this possession and it should have been intercepted. This time they find an opening and he's a weapon in the middle of the field. A very good pass receiver, he's got good speed, had 35 catches a year ago and does a nice job of hanging on to the football at the end of this catch. Got it down to the 17, 25 yard pickup. Now it's an eye backfield with Darkins, a fullback in there. A few times tonight we've seen this formation. Play action. Yes. Going to the corner where nobody's home. Let's check in with Reese Davis. Here, Oregon State driving in TCU territory. Jaquiz Rogers got away, got the corner. Rogers! What a great block by James Rogers. James Rogers said in that soundbite, he likes to try to give his brother a two way go. That means you want to just size up your man and let him go in or out. Watch the block by James Rogers on the cornerback, Greg McCoy. Stands him straight up and allows Chuck Wiz to either go in or out, get to the corner, and get inside the five yard line. So the Beavers bring in an extra tight end as they've got it. At the two-yard line, a 16-yard run. Actually, it's at the one-yard line. A 16-yard run by Rodgers to get him close. Quiz again. Tiptoes in. Touchdown. Mom's loving it. So are all the Oregon State faithful. We're a point away from a tie game again. You go 
back to the interception that Andy Dalton threw. The interception that almost was thrown by Ryan Katz that was dropped. And now we have a tie ball game almost. Justin Kahoot for the third tie of the Knights. It's up and good. Now Andy Dalton knows what his job is. Try to get the football back in Oregon State's end, but not make a mistake. Remember this? This was the first play of this scoring drive. Almost threw it right back to him. As it turned out, they got it inside the two, and Quiz took it in to tie the ball game up. The 2010 Cowboys Classic, brought to you by Dick's Sporting Goods. Every season starts at Dick's. And Dr. Pepper, there's nothing like a pepper. They tell us it's the best locker room on the premises, the locker room of the Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders. I know one thing, they got more makeup mirrors in that one than they do in the <laughs> Cowboys locker room. 21-21, 533, remaining third quarter. Jaquiz Rogers finally got free. For a touchdown to cap an 87-yard drive and eight plays. So we're dead even for the third time tonight. He had a couple good runs on that drive. Yes, he did. Kahoot to kick. Jeremy Curley camps under it at the six-yard line. Curley had a little seam for a second. Got out to about the 29-yard line. Anthony Watkins made the stop there. Well... Don't forget Boise State and Virginia Tech coming up on Monday night. You talk about implications as far as the BCS. Boise State with that high national ranking after an undefeated season last year. But Frank Beamer and the Hokies are waiting for him at FedEx Field. Yeah, I like the Hokies in that game. I got a lot of respect for Kellen Moore. We did the game against TCU last year. Chris Peterson, great coach. I think the running game of Virginia Tech and their physicality will be the difference in that game Monday night. Andy Dalton. A set up shot with the offense at the 29 yard line. Play action. He's going to go deep down the sideline and incomplete. Intended for Jimmy Young. Dalton tonight has thrown a couple interceptions. Todd, you talked about the Fiesta Bowl. He had three in yeah. that game and lost, and there's a very vital statistic in his interception ratio. Vital and alarming if you're a TCU fan. When he throws no interceptions in his career, TCU is 22 0. When he throws two or more, they're 0 and 4. And he's thrown two tonight. That was good coverage that time by James Dockery. But uh, again, Andy Dalton, he said what he took away from that loss and his performance, stay even keel. Play the whole, the whole game. Don't lose focus and don't let your emotions get the best of you. Number 61 this isn't going to help the cause either. We're second, second, down. Down. second down and 15. There's a new center in there, Jake Kirkpatrick, who's the senior and one of the offensive captains. He was shaken up. On the last drive when TCU had the football. And so Josh Vernon has slid over there from his guard position. And that's never a situation you want to get in either, whether it's shotgun snap or just direct snap to your quarterback. In this case, it's going to be the shotgun. And the center does more than snap the ball in this offense. He's got to set the protections as well. A lot of thinking as well. Dalton. There's a good throw to Curry. First down. Out of bounds. About the 42-yard line, pickup of 18. Now everybody remembers Curley as a return guy. That's where he's made his biggest plays. But he was the leading receiver on this team last year with 44 catches. He's become a very good receiver throughout his career. Jared Anderson told us, the offensive coordinator, he's got to remind him all the time, just think of everything as a home game. Says he tends to lose focus on the road. And he said, I'm going to tell him, make sure even though we're not at our own stadium, this is our home game. Well, he was focused on that catch. And there's a first down at the 43-yard line. Here's the option that's been successful tonight. Pitch to Wesley, and it's successful again. All the way inside of 45 to the 43. You know, playing defense and good defense is about leverage. It's about staying on top of the, def of the offense. If they run outside, having more guys outside to force it in. And every time TCU has run this option, they've been able to leverage the Oregon State defense. They've been able to get outside and get more people out there to block than they have defenders. Here comes a quick snap again. 
And it's Wesley again. And another first down run. Well, right at it. He got about 10 more, and he's over 100 for the night. And he's averaging about nine yards a pop. Comes up limping a little bit. He's had a heck of a game. Yeah. What I like here, too, is uh, the, the answer by TCU. Go right back down the field. Do it by running the football, which you do best. Mix in some pass, and don't panic. There's no reason to panic. We've overcome the turnover, and now we're coming back this way. Whoa. Wide snap, but they got it down anyway. And Tucker, and that was one of the best hands job of the night by the quarterback. Andy Dalton, he had to reach out there, snare that one, and then pitch it almost all in one move. Again, yeah, the new center. It's, uh, Watch this one. Whoa. <laughs> well, he knew he was going that way. Yeah. I guess he said, I'll give you a head start. <laughs> I'll lead you a little yeah. bit. That's better than going the other way. Yeah, you got that right. We saw that today with Florida. They had major problems snapping the football. Did they ever? Tucker again. Bulldozing his way for what might be another first down. And right now that offensive front of TCU is kind of wearing out Oregon State's defensive line. It's going to be close to a first down. While we're checking it, let's check in with Reese. Impressive statistics by those three. There were some big games all over the country. Aaron Murray making his first start for Georgia had a big game. Dewey Mane was shaken up on the play and came to the sideline while they're measuring and they're about uh, what a link shy or just that clip that's on the end of the links whatever that's called we'll just call it the clip so it's going to be third down in the clip last time on third down in this short TCU passed in this spot on the field and had it intercepted. I don't think they're going to do that again. Not with about two inches to go. Matthew Tucker the lone setback. Dalton will do it himself and he's got the first down. Check in with Holly Rowe. Holly? So guys, I feel like this is a little bit of false advertising because they kept saying that it's air conditioned in here in this building, but TCU was smart. They made a request to open the roof of the building. That way there's no air condition being used and it is hot as can be down here on the field. <laughs> you just saw one of the Oregon State players cramping up on that last play. Guys are starting to get tired. And T Gary Patterson was smart. He knew this wouldn't be a home field advantage because of the heat and he found a way to make it so. They practiced eight straight days in over 100 degrees for fall training camp. So pretty smart move by Gary Patterson. Yeah, it was hot as blazes down here until the last couple of days has been very nice. Mark Johnson with a very nice reception and out of bounds inside the 15. Well, Holly's right about the, the advantage for TCU. I was up in Corvallis on Wednesday, and when I landed in Portland, I realized that all I had was shorts and flip-flops and T-shirts, and I needed to buy a, a pullover to wear to practice on Wednesday afternoon because it was not hot up there this week. It's pretty nice, but not hot. Here's a quick snap. Tucker down about the 11. And again, running the football like this takes steam and heart and legs away from a defense. Especially when you're working in what is a hotter condition, as you and Holly were talking about it here. They had the roof closed until the pregame, and it takes about 12 minutes to open it up. They're trying to keep their defensive linemen as fresh as possible, knowing that they've got a fourth quarter to play. That's why Pai is not in every play. They're rotating to try to keep them fresh, but they have not been able to stop TCU. Here's the option again. And Wesley off the pitch from Dalton. Got it down near the seven. Dwight Roberson, who has an interception in the ball game, in on the tackle. Pia coming back in. He was out for a breather. Right now, TCU can get a first down. Inside the one yard line, so it's not second down and goal. As you can see, the strike, if they get it that close, they'll probably get it in. Quiz Rogers is trying to chill on the sideline as we saw him earlier. He tied the game up, and now Tucker trying to change that tie again. Third down coming up, and this is the biggest third down of the ball game for TCU. This is where, when you've got a quarterback like Dalton. Yep. If you roll him out, he's got a little bit of an option, maybe. They got about uh, three to go. 
Long two actually. When they've got him on the edge, it hasn't been with a run pass option. It's been a keeper pitch option. And uh, that's been effective. They're on the right hash. I'll be surprised if they don't run wide to the left with the little option and give Dalton the choice on the edge. Here's the pistol set. Third down and long two. He rides it and keeps it and scores it. Touchdown. Andy Dalton for the score from three yards out. Well, watch the defensive end, Taylor Henry, 91, just crashed right down on the back, and it left a little hole, a nice seam there for Andy Dalton to squeeze in. Ross Evans for the point after, and it's good. And another lead change back in the favor of the Horn Frogs. And for the sixth time tonight, Andy Dalton, on a third down situation, picks up a first down rushing. More importantly, in this case, not only a first down rushing, but a touchdown rushing. And that gives his team the lead, 28-21. Well, watch again. Taylor Henry is the end over here. He's going to chase this play, thinking the back's getting the ball all the way. And watch the nice job by the quarterback. Put it in the belly, keep it, keep it, keep it, and then pull it out the last minute and enough of a crease to get it into the end zone. So the lead goes back to the Horn Frogs. Ranked sixth in the country. Trying to take this opportunity in this football season to do what they did a year ago, which is run the table in the regular season. And a lot of people think if they get by this game, they've yeah. got Utah down the road, and there's an SMU game that might be tough. BYU. But they're capable. They are very capable. And I, what I like and what I'm seeing out of them tonight is their resolve, right. you know, their toughness. And it starts with their quarterback. He's thrown two interceptions, but he's battled back. He's kept his poise. And offensively, when they've needed to respond and answer, they have. Charples to kick. High and short. Rodgers camps under it at the 10. James Rodgers across the 25 and out to the 28-yard line. Talked about TCU and their schedule at SMU. That's on ESPN, and that won't be that easy either. But that Utah game down in November looms large. Utah with a big win in their opener over Pitt the other night. I agree. You know, Gary Patterson told us, you know, with this game against this opponent, it's not about style points. It's about winning by one more point. Yeah. And I agree. This is a quality opponent in Oregon State. Right now they're up by seven points. Can they keep it that way? Draw play. Jaquiz Rogers with a stiff arm. A stutter move and then he got planted by two guys. And the 35 yard line. T.J. Johnson and Colin Jones. But not before he got six or seven yards. Yep. I mean he did get planted. But this is another good run for Jaquiz. A little delay draw. He breaks the tackle attempt by Colin Jones. Jones gets him at the end, but not before Quiz gets three or four more yards. 55 yards now for Quiz, including a touchdown. Second down at four. James Rogers coming the other way, and Big Brother's got a first down. And there you see the idea. When you say a guy plays bigger than he is, that's a perfect example. He's only 5'7". He may only weigh 190 pounds, but he is really thick in his lower body. So when you hit him, at the waist level and don't wrap up, he's not going down. Watch T.J. Johnson gets a doesn't wrap him up. He just sheds that tackle and gets the first down. At the 44-yard line, as the third quarter comes to a close, end of three, good football game in the Cowboy Classic. Right now, the home team's got the advantage, but by only a touchdown. TCU 28. Oregon State 21, hang around, fourth quarter is on deck. You're watching ESPN, new home of the Bowl Championship Series. Set to start the fourth quarter of the Cowboy Classic presented by Hampton Hotels. Brad Nessler, Todd Blackledge, Holly Rowe, and our ESPN crew. Good football game. Number six team in the country leading by a touchdown. 
Beavers of Oregon State have got the ball to start the fourth with a first down at their own 44 yard line. The quiz Rodgers, the single setback. They fake it to him. Ryan Katz loading, firing, and tipped by Tanner Brock, the middle linebacker. See, now that's one I think he's got to dump off to Jacquez Rodgers. He, he tried to go downfield and it wasn't there. Jacquez was his outlet. He's got to dump it off to number one and see if he can make a play. Watch Jacquez. He's out here as an outlet receiver and he passes up on going to him and throws it down the field. Let Jacquez get it in space and see if he can make a play for you. You can see the reaction of Rodgers kind of tipped his helmet back as if to say if he just would have gotten it to me. I had a little room to work. As you look at the eyes of Quiz, on the second down and 10. Cats fires incomplete on the out. Aaron Nichols, the intended receiver. Now it's third down and 10. for 23 on the night. He started hot at two touchdown passes in the first half, but he is cooled. There's his third down passing. They need that to go to five out of eight right here on a third and ten. And James is right here. That's probably where he's going to look on this play. High snap. Has plenty of time. Got away from the rush, now running for his life, and down he goes. Tracked down by Wayne Daniels, his second sack of the night. A great second effort by Wayne Daniels. They are able to flush him out of the pocket. Daniels doesn't give up on the play, keeps his chase alive, and is able to trip up Katz before he can throw the ball. A lot of times when a quarterback gets outside of the pocket, there's open receivers down the field. Daniels was able to trip him up. We saw Jerry Hughes with a big smile on the sideline, cheering on his former teammate as Daniels doing it like Hughes used to. Here's a nice kick from Heckers. Curly way back at the 10. No fair catch, and he's drilled. Great coverage. 49-yard kick and absolutely no return. Dax Gilbeck got down there on special teams to make the hit. Uh, ESPN 2's coverage of Major League Baseball and the hunt for October continues tomorrow night. Giants and Dodgers will get together. Sunday Night Baseball presented by Taco Bell. Part of the hunt for October presented by Lee Jeans on ESPN 2 and ESPN3.com. 8 o'clock Eastern tomorrow night. Well, this is another one of those critical defensive possessions for Oregon State. They don't necessarily need a three and out, but that punt and the good coverage flipped the field. They've got to keep TCU in this part of the field for their offense. Dalton got it out to Sky Dawson. They try to get some blockers in front of him, and Dawson spins and fights for about eight yards out to the 19-yard line. Dawson, world-class speed with a sophomore out of Mesquite, Texas. He'll become more and more a part of this offense as the season rolls along. Talk about speed and world-class speed, including the gold medal. And the Cowboy Bob Hayes here in the ring of honor at Cowboy Stadium. Let's check in with Reese Davis. Reese. receiver and Brandon Harden was back there defending 29 victories in the career for this young man Andy Dalton one more win would put him in the record books in school history he would pass yes indeed slinging Sammy Ball who was an All-American in the 30s here and went on to a great NFL Hall of Fame career great punter as well he won 29 games for the Horn Frogs and if Andy wins this game and he's up by a touchdown he goes in the record books with his 30th win in a TCU uniform and of course there's a Sammy Baugh building named here 
And uh, Andy kind of said, you know, maybe they can put me in parentheses or something. <laughs> he, he basically just told us the other day, man, to be mentioned in the same sentence with Sammy Barr, are you kidding me? Well, here's the play right here for Oregon State. They did a nice job on first and second down. Maybe the longest third down play TCU has had tonight. Third and eight plus. They've got to come up with a stop. They still could get good field position after a punt if they get a stop here. And in long yardage, they're 0 for 2 on these third downs. Big play by both teams, for both teams, right here. Dalton over the middle, crossing pattern. Is it going to be enough? No, it's not. Nice defense. By Michael Doctor. Just what the doctor ordered right there. Big hit. Yeah. They're going to have to punt it. That was a mistake, I think, by the young receiver, Josh Boyce, who made the catch. He tried to stretch that to the sideline to gain the first down. I think maybe if he just turns right upfield after the catch, he has a better chance of converting that first down. So now, Anson Kelton, that 280-pound punter, set to kick away to the 188-pound James Rogers. Rogers averaged about 12 yards of punt return last year. But when you look at the field like this, if he hits a line drive, James will have a chance. It's anything but a line drive. It's a mile in the air. James backpedals to the 13. Got by one. James Rogers, 20, 25, and out to the 27. Did what he could. And little brother Jaquiz getting ready to put his lid on and be part of the offense. Can Oregon State come back and tie it up? Hang around. Find out with us. The 2010 Cowboys Classic is presented by Hampton Hotels. At Hampton, we love having you here. And in part by Lee. Getting comfortable never looked so good. We've got a great one going on here at the Cowboy Classic. We'll have another one for you in the All-State kickoff in the Capitol as part of Dick's Sporting Goods kickoff week, Monday night, 8 o'clock. Boise State ran the table a year ago. They're ranked third in the country in Virginia Tech, number 10 at FedEx Field. First down, Oregon State trailing by a touchdown with 11-13 remaining. The quiz Rogers, a tough four yards. Tank Carter as we check in with Holly. Well, all preseason, all anyone said around here is what in the world will TCU do without Jerry Hughes? And Jerry, I'll ask you, how do you think they've done so far without you? I think they're doing great right now. You know, they're up in the game, they're winning the ball game, and that's all that matters right now. Daniels has had two sacks in your old position. What is it about how Gary Patterson teaches defense that allows you guys to be successful? Uh, you know what? He takes that speed and he kind of just molds it and puts it on the field. Wherever he can get that speed on the field, he's going to do it. And you know, we got a great defensive line coach with Dick Bumpers. You know, he does a great job of coaching us, teaching his moves, and just getting us out there. All right. Well, he's taught him some moves. He's going back to the Indianapolis Colts, and he said things are going pretty well up there for him, guys. All right. Good luck, Jerry. The Ted Hendricks Award winner is the best defensive end in the country last year. And there's Coach Bumpus, who Jerry was talking about. Jerry was also named the Mountain West Conference Male Athlete of the Year, something that was just awarded recently, even though he's a pro now. He was a great amateur here with TCU. A huge third and one. The up man's got it. And the up man's got the first down. Wow, that was Jacquez in the fullback position with James behind him. That's second or third time <laughs> they've shown that formation yeah. tonight. I mean, you just see the toughness of Jacquez Rogers. Here's he the is. smallest yeah. fullback in football right That's here. That's exactly right. <laughs> but he sneaks right through there. He knows what he needed for first down, and he's not afraid to put his nose down and go get tough yards. Ryan Katz has a look with Rodgers behind him on first down. Fakes it to him. Wants to go deep on the sideline of James Rodgers. Broke it up. Wow, Greg McCoy, a great closing burst, or it would have been a touchdown. He had a great closing burst, and because Ryan Katz had to kind of double clutch this throw, he wasn't able to get enough on it. Rodgers has him beat with the stop and go. But the ball hung in the air a little bit, and McCoy was able to close the gap, but it's because Katz had to kind of pull it down and reset because of the pressure and got the throw off a little bit late. McCoy, by the way, is a 4-3, 240 guy, too, so there's no lack of speed out there. 
And he and James Rogers have had a battle all night, including that last play. Second down at 10 for the Beavers. Cats in the gun. Time to throw, but it's high. And through the hands of Aaron Nichols. That one he had too much on. Well, and, and I think Ryan Katz, the youth and inexperience of Ryan Katz is starting to show up a little bit more in the second half. Two of nine now in the second half. And he's missed his last five. And see, that was an easy one. You know, the, the play before was a nice play by McCoy. That was an open receiver, and he just made a poor throw. And now he's got a third and ten. And the purple-clad Horn Frog fans up again and making noise for the defense. Oregon State's going to have to earn this one. Third down and a 4 10. High snap, draw play. Quiz Rogers trying to dance his way to the sticks. He won't get there, but he did get to the 45, where it's going to be fourth down and three. Still a lot of time left in the ball game. You're playing field position right now if you're Mike Riley as well. You flip the field on the last exchange. You didn't get a score out of it, but at least you've got Hecker in a position to pin TCU back again. He's got to have a solid kick here and not let Curley make something happen on the other end. Remember, his short punt to Curley resulted in the late second quarter touchdown by TCU. The last time he came out to kick, he blasted one. Snaps a little low. He handles it, and he kicks it high in the air. And it's going to have to be a fair catch by Curley. At the 16-yard line. 8.27 remaining in the football game. TCU has got the lead and the ball when we come back. Bart Johnson right there, number six, part of our All-State Good Hands play of the game. And here it is. Good Hands play brought to you by All-State. Watch this throw from Andy Dalton. And watch Bart Johnson take it off with his fingertips, the top of the turf. There's about two inches of spare right here. Great catch. Sometimes a quarterback makes a receiver look good, <laughs> and sometimes a receiver makes a quarterback look good. Absolutely. What Gary Patterson wants from his offense right now is eat some clock, run the football, and flip the field. And they have run the football very well tonight. Especially with this guy who's over 100 yards. Ed Wesley bounces out of bounds. Knocked out by Dockery. Well, that's not what he wanted. He didn't no. want his running back to run out of bounds and stop the clock. Keep the clock running. Run the football. And, and move the chain. So even if you don't score, you've got a touchdown lead. Even if you don't score, get yourself in a position to punt Oregon State down. And then count on that rock solid defense to keep him down there. On second down, Dalton play action. He's going to go for all of it down the far sideline, and it's incomplete. Brandon Harden broke it up. Now the pass down the sideline to Josh Boyce. So you look at Brandon Harden. He's big for a corner. Yeah. I mean, he's 6'2", 215 pounds, and the coaches at TCU said, that's the guy we're going to go after. He's a little bit more of a run support guy, a banger. The other guy, Dockery, is probably their best cover guy. We're going to go after Harden. They got him once early in the game, but he's held his own pretty well. Now the Horn Frogs have backed themselves into a little bit of a mud hole here on third down and long and have stopped the clock twice. Third and seven. Big play for the Oregon State defense. Dalton keeps it. Ooh, does he get it? I think he might. I think he might have. Well, Beavers are saying the ball's out. I think he got the first down. You talk about a big run if indeed that's a first down. On third down and seven, it is. Andy Dalton, who had a touchdown run to give his team the lead, has now on third down again come up, and this time it's the longest run he's come up with on a third down conversion right here. And he's not a slide guy. He's a guy who's going to go head first and forward towards that first down marker and another big run for Dalton. Now he's back in the shotgun and the pistol set with Wesley behind him, and the clock is moving. 7.25 remaining in the ball game. Like I think they got the playoffs. Delay a game. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. Todd, you know, I'm sure 
And it may have happened today in Georgia Tech's game or maybe a Navy game. I don't know that I've seen so many third down conversion runs by a yeah. quarterback. I'm sure Joshua Nesbitt probably yeah. had four or five today, but Dalton's got seven. Yeah. For a team that's not really known as an option team, uh, yeah, you're right. They back themselves up here. First and 15, but again, the clock's going to move its way inside the seven-minute mark. Leading by seven, six-ranked TCU. Quick throw in the flat to Curley. He wants to stay in bounds, get what he can, and he does both. And he's almost got another first down. On a nine-yard pickup for Jeremy Curley. Senior out of Hutto, Texas. Nice accurate throw, and you mentioned it. Curley did a did a real nice job of staying in bounds, getting what he could, getting it into a second and very short situation. That ties his career high. His career high was six catches in the Fiesta Bowl. He's got six more tonight. And now the Horn Frogs have got a first down again on the ground as they're churning up yardage on the ground. They're well over 200 yards rushing, and a stat for TCU. When they go over 167 yards on the ground, they've won their last 40 games in a row. And they're up about 250 or so right now. Well, again, this is exactly what Gary Patterson wanted out of this drive. I mean, obviously, you'd love to score again and make it a two-score game. But if you don't do that, at least now you've gotten in a position where you can pin them back if you have to punt and trust your defense. And put it on the shoulders of a quarterback making his first start on the other side. And out to the 47 is Andy Dalton and down to the field to Holly. Well, Brad, you mentioned it earlier, the unusual color of the TCU uniforms and helmets. It's gray going to white. And the theme for this team this year is an old quote by their former coach, Dutch Meyer, who was legendary back in the 1930s. Gary Patterson plucked this quote. Fight him till hell freezes over, and then fight him on the ice. So Nike <laughs> designed these uniforms. It's lizard skin that turns white to ice, and inside the neck of their jerseys is embroidered the words, till hell freezes. Boy, Dutch Meyer, who coached here 1934 to 52. Here's an end around. Young wants to stay inbounds, and did. He got down before he's actually shoved out over there on the far side. And a pickup of about a yard. That was Tucker, beg your pardon. So the clock will move. We're under five minutes. TCU trying to hang on in front of 46,138 tonight at the Cowboy Classic. Third down, it's usually Andy Dalton's down. 12 or 14 third down plays, they've run the football. Go back in the backfield, that doesn't mean they're not running. That's no. exactly right. This time they will throw and knock down, what a play. Defensively by Dwight Roberson, who has an interception tonight, and that's an even bigger play. He made the interception on third down, and he made the huge play there on third down. Not only do they get a stop, it stops the clock as well with the incompletion. But again, TCU has the opportunity with a good punt here to make Ryan Katz and Oregon State go a long field for a tying touchdown. You talked about it before, Ledger. At least TCU ran four minutes off the yep. clock. That was big. And now if they get a good kick, they could maybe pin James Rogers inside the 10. They hang it up there. Short. Yeah, it's short. And he'll call for a fair catch over to about the 18-yard line on the far side of the field. 34-yard kick. He ain't over yet. Oregon State still got something to say about this football game with 418 to play. Our prime time college football presented by Hampton Hotels. It's a cowboy classic in Arlington. Oregon State, we talked about it. Their slow starts under Mike Riley. They're one and twelve in pre-October games, which includes a late August game. That's why we say pre-October. Well, right now they've got still time to do something about it. 4-18 remaining, but they trail by a touchdown. Remember, they got Boise State also in the first three weeks of the season. They wanted to get off to a hot start here, but they got upset TCU on the road. They got a long ways to go from the 18-yard line. Katz is changing the play completely at the line of scrimmage. This first play is very important. Oh, Whoa, that's not what you want to do. 
Katz is going to kick it out of the back of the end zone. Safety. TCU. Two more. I don't know that he's allowed to kick it like that. Well, Ruby Shaman did it to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, didn't he? Or was it Gary Uprimi? One of those guys did that. For the first time tonight, Ryan Katz is trying to change the play, and the center, their best lineman, Alex Lindenkoll, snaps it when he wasn't ready, and it went over his head. The worst possible thing that could happen on this drive just happened for Oregon State. Yeah, it is, it is a penalty. He's not able to kick. It's an illegal kick. But the result of the play is still a safety. They attack the penalty on uh, what will be a free kick, and now it's a two-possession game. Yeah. Todd, it's 30-21. There just could not have been anything worse other than an interception return for a touchdown that could have happened right there to TC or to Oregon State. I don't know if Lennon Cole didn't have a count or Cass just wasn't ready. Whatever, it's the worst thing, as Todd said, and we saw Florida have that happen to them today. And uh, you see the linemen down there, they're all talking about it. Meanwhile, Ryan Katz would just like to have another opportunity. He's on the headset, but he might never get the football back now. Not the way TCU's been running the ball. So Johnny Hecker will have the free kick. Curly and Clay are the deep men. Disaster strikes in Arlington for Oregon State on that last play. And not a good free kick either. Taken on one hop perfectly by Curly. And Curly is across midfield. TCU couldn't have had anything work better. Yeah. Short free kick, good return in Oregon State territory. But here again, Katz trying to change the play maybe and watch the snap. Never even looked at it. No. He's still looking at the formation. He's trying to change the play. Probably not the best time to try to make an audible like that. And uh, again, the worst situation. He's trying to communicate to the whole field. And he's looking left, and the ball goes right over his head, or right past his head. So a nine-point lead for TCU. Here comes Ed Wesley. There goes Ed Wesley to the 30-yard line. And the Horned Frogs, yeah. four minutes away from wrapping this thing up. And, of course, now the question becomes for TCU. I mean... Are they a national championship contending kind of team if they can run the table? I mean, this this looked to be the most difficult challenge on their schedule. You never know. There's a lot of football to be played. Remember, last year, the Big 12 championship, Texas and Nebraska. Texas got one more tick of the clock put back on after Colt McCoy threw that ball out of bounds and got a field goal to win that game, or TCU would have been in the national championship game against Alabama. So they got a long ways to go. We got about... 13 more weeks to think about that, I guess. Yep. We sure do. Now to the 25 is Wesley. Another pickup of six. Good, solid game for Ed Wesley, the sophomore out of Irving, Texas, as he's been a workhorse tonight. And Tucker, when he's come in there, he's done well too, but over 100 and closing in on his best game ever. Ed Wesley's best game was against Utah, 137 last year. This TCU team returned 16 starters from that undefeated team last year. Nine of them on offense. They lost some key guys on defense. We already mentioned Jerry Hughes, Darrell Washington, middle linebacker, a pair of corners who were four-year starters. And the offense has, has carried the team tonight. They've been more physical than Oregon State. I like their offensive line. Yep. Here's Tucker and Dalton Rather keeping it. Uh, play fake to Tucker and got it down within two yards of the first down. Third down at about two. Time is of the essence right now. Oregon State needs the ball to pop out or something or they might not get another chance. Mike Riley will know that one slipped away here. Mike still has a uh, summer home near San Antonio so he gets back to Texas for about a month 
every summer as he was head coach of San Antonio of the World League back around the 90. But this trip is not going to be a happy one it appears unless the ball will pop out for him. On the ground first down to the 20 is Tucker. You know you could just see the look in his face the frustration and it's not that they got beat or are going to get beat because he knows TCU is a high quality team right. but you don't give yourself a chance at the end with that play that that backfired and the safety it just took their whole chance away to make a run at TCU here in the last four minutes of the game and that's that's the frustrating thing the thing that'll eat at him the whole plane ride home right. back to Corvallis TCU we'll talk about third down conversions tonight Oregon State will too. TCU 11 out of 16 on their third down conversions including that last one they've got him a first down at the 20. And Matthew Tucker with a minute and a half to go. Andy Dalton, 17 to 27, a touchdown and one on the ground. Look at that. 37 career starts to one. That's the difference in this game tonight. Andy Dalton was able to overcome two interceptions, critical interceptions, and come back and lead his team and make plays when they needed him to make plays, both throwing it and running it. Ryan Katz is going to be an outstanding quarterback. Yeah. He's got great tools, but uh, this has got to be a learning experience for him. Andy Katz for the first time with two or more interceptions is going to get away with it and get a victory. And it's going to be a victory that's going to put him in the school record books as he is under a minute away from being the winningest quarterback in TCU history. His 30th win is coming to pass Davey O'Brien on the all-time List. Uh, Sammy Ball, I beg your pardon, on the all-time list. The thing I like Fans about, know that yeah. The thing I like about Andy Dalton is, you know, he he hated the way he played in that Fiesta Bowl. Threw three interceptions. Couldn't wait to get back on the field this year. Said his takeaway from that game was, I got to stay even keeled. If I make a mistake, I can't let it get to me. I've got to stay the course and be a calm leading and a calm influence for the rest of my team. And he did that tonight. Seven third down conversion runs by just the quarterback alone. And what will end up being a three yard touchdown. That's the winning touchdown that put him up 28 to 21. So now 47 seconds remain. They come back out on the field. Oregon State, you see the yellow dashes underneath the Beavers down there on the bottom. That's their remaining one timeout. TCU's got all three left and they don't need them. But here's another third down. Wouldn't shock me if Andy Dalton ran the ball. Matthew Tucker's back there with him in the Horn Frog backfield. Here's Dalton. Didn't get the first down this time, but he's within about a yard of it. As we check in with Reese Davis. Reese. The final seconds ticking off. Gary Patterson, his team goes to 1 0, the number six team in the country. Tough loss for number 24, Oregon State, and Mike Riley. Be a long ride back to Corvallis, but a really good football game in the Cowboy Classic 30 to 21 as we check in with Holly and the winning coach. Well, coach, what was going through your mind early in this game when your senior quarterback threw two picks? Well, the last game we played, we didn't turn out so good, but. Uh, you know, the good thing was we were able to overcome it. And, um, you know, I was happy with our defense. They have some good offensive players. We got to not allow big plays. We stopped the run mostly. And obviously we did it when we needed to do it. Not, I'm proud of everybody, special teams, the whole group. Well, particularly your running game, not only Andy Dalton on key third downs, but Ed Wesley had a terrific game. What enabled you to run the ball like you did? Well, you know, it's an old team. I, I keep telling everybody we had nine, ten starters coming back and everybody else. We were missing a tackle. So we were able to put a lot of the offense in early. Everybody was playing with confidence. And uh, 
now we've got 11 more ball games, so we'll see how they turn out. All right, thank you, Coach. You bet. Didn't need style points, just needed one more point. Ended up nine points up, and there's the winningest quarterback in school history. If it was a baseball game, he'd have the game-winning hit. His 17th career rushing touchdown was the one that won it. He's got 30 wins now in that uniform, and he's a happy guy. 30-21, TCU winning. Stay tuned, coming up next, SportsCenter on ESPN. Right now, four of my partners, Todd Blackledge and Holly Rowe, and our entire crew from Arlington, Texas, and Cowboy Stadium. Brad Nessler saying so long. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Horn Frogs 30, Beavers 21, the final from Texas tonight.